Good morning. Welcome to the Wayne Estes Center. Uh, my name is Doug Hoffman. I'm the, the Associate Athletics Director for Media Relations. Um, for those media that are in attendance today, um, we'll have an opportunity to do some one-on-ones afterwards with administration, uh, with our new head coach, and with student athletes that are not currently in class. Uh, we have several basketball players that are here today. Um, as far as the general audience, uh, we encourage you guys to ask some questions after the new coach is done speaking, and then uh, we'll go from there. Before we get started, if you can all just silence your cell phones so we don't have any distractions during today's event. And with that, we'll get started. Let me introduce first uh, our president, Noel Cockett. What a great day for Aggie Athletics. I am so happy that all of you, our supporters, our students, our university are here to celebrate a very, very special day um, at Utah State University. And this is the day that we are welcoming Coach Smith and his family to the Aggie family. So welcome. I did notice, though, we're going to have to work in, on some teaching of our uh, Scotsman. And just for clarification, we are not milking cows when we're doing this, okay? That's often a question we get. Um, but I've had a chance to meet Coach Smith and his wife, Darcy, and I can tell you that they are going to bring incredible strength to Utah State in their enthusiasm, uh, their spirit, and just their ideals. They fit so well into what we are doing here. Our support of our student athletes, a uh, quest for a winning record, and uh, just greatness of Utah State University. So I'm very proud that uh, we have made this happen for all of our Aggie supporters. So I'm gonna turn over the time now to our Director of Athletics, John Hartwell. He's gonna tell us a little bit about the process, how we got here today, and then do the introduction of Coach Smith and his family. So thank you again for celebrating this great event with us. So, President Cockett and I didn't compare notes before we started here, but I was going to start with the same thing. Every day is a great day to be an Aggie, but today is an exceptional day to be a Utah State Aggie. Really, really excited, and it won't take you all very long to see the juice and energy that Coach Craig Smith is going to infuse, not just into our men's basketball program, not just into our athletic department, but into our university and into Cache Valley. And that's one of the things that I am really, really excited about. So as Noel said, we started this process a, a little over two weeks ago. And one of the things that in my almost three years that I continued to hear is, hey, we've got to get the spectrum magic back. We've got to get the spectrum magic back. And we've seen glimpses of it over the last few years, but as I've looked back at videos and tapes and heard many of you talk about what it really meant to have the Spectrum Magic, I can't wait for that to be there every night, and I really think that's gonna be there every night. And it's not about that building over there, it's about a culture. It's about a culture of over 100 years of history in our basketball program. It's about over 1,600 wins. It's about 20 NCAA tournament appearances, nine NCAA tournament or NIT tournament appearances, 16 conference championships, 28 All-Americans, and six Player of the Year winners in our various conferences. That's what the Spectrum Magic is about, and I believe that we have found the person to take us there, not in peaks and ballot, not, not once every five or six years, but to get the consistency of the spectrum magic back again. 
So as, as we started this process, there were several characteristics that were really key as we looked at potential candidates. High character, high energy, charisma. And you may say, well, how do you define charisma? I don't know that you can truly define charisma, but when you meet people that have it, you know it. And there was an instant chemistry with Craig Smith in the interview last week, in the in-person interview last week. Also, obviously, beyond those personal characteristics, there's got to be basketball knowledge. So somebody who's a proven recruiter, who has gone out and found talent, and not only finding talent, but developing talent. Player development is so key. So from the time a young man steps into our program to the day he leaves, how much better has he gotten? Has he been challenged in the weight room, on the court, various places? And ultimately, are they a team player? Is, is it about, and it is going to be, about the Utah State across the front of the jersey, not the name across the back of the jersey? Because we're all in this together. This university, this institution, is greater than any one individual. It's about Utah State. And he totally understands that. So as I talk to people all over the country, people with great basketball IQ that I trust, this guy's name kept coming up. So as we literally went coast to coast, talked to a bunch of people, Craig Smith is the name that kept coming up. So I'm gonna divert for just a minute from basketball and read you an email I got yesterday. And I promise you over the last three weeks, boy, I've gotten plenty of advice, good and bad, about what I should do or what we need to do or what I didn't do. But, and, and, and believe me, I read every one of those emails, but here's one that I got yesterday that goes beyond the basketball components that I, if you'll pardon me for just a minute, I wanna read this to you. This is from a Rick Willemson from the booming metropolis and I had to actually get out my, uh, my map to see where this is, from the booming metropolis of T, South Dakota. Yes, that's spelled like Ice T, South Dakota. Mr. Hartwell, good afternoon. My name is Rick Willemson. I'm a middle school teacher and high school basketball coach from T, South Dakota, about an hour from USD. I just wanted to let you know that your hire of Coach Smith will be one that your fans and student athletes will love. I have only talked to Craig two or three times, but the impact that he has on people, his team, and the community is amazing. Last year, Craig was watching his son at a basketball tournament in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and my son was playing in the tournament as well. My 12-year-old son, being a huge USD Coyote fan, was excited to see Coach and took a picture of him. And when Craig saw him do this, he waited a few minutes and then he crept up upon my son and asked if he wanted to take a picture with him. Craig then visited with my son for a few minutes about basketball, school, etc., that totally blew my son away. And a few months later, my son received a package from USD Basketball with a t-shirt and a handwritten note thanking him for visiting with him and being a supporter of the Coyotes. Our family has been even bigger fans since that day. This is the kind of guy that you are getting. I think USU will be getting a family of fans from T South Dakota, as well as other Coyote followers. Time for us to buy some Aggie gear. Thanks for your time, Rick Willemson. So that is, that is just, And an unsolicited snapshot, I think, of the character and integrity of Craig Smith. And I can't wait to introduce him as the new men's basketball coach of the Utah State Aggies, Coach Craig Smith. Wow, this is awesome. Hey, let's give a round of applause to our pet man here. Dude, big time. My son Carson, Carson, raise your hand. 
Raise your hand. Yep. Carson just is learning how to play the uh, trumpet, so you can imagine. Yeah. So you can imagine what our house is like at night. You know, um, Carson, go outside so we can concentrate uh, what's going on. But what a great day. What a great turnout. Thanks, everybody, for uh, showing up. You know, I've been in this business for a long time, 22 years, and been fortunate enough to coach at every level. NEI, uh, D2, low major, mid major, high major, and uh, been a head coach, been an ops guy, and everything in between. You know, when you coach at the lower levels, you're a, an assistant coach, you're a, a custodian, you're the SID, you're the, you name it, you do it. And so, you know, what, what really attracted me to Utah State, quite frankly, was about eight, nine years ago, I was an assistant coach at Colorado State. And of course, uh, Utah State was in the WAC at the time, and we were in the Mountain West. And excuse, you might have to have some earplugs, because I talk loud, I could probably do without the microphone, quite frankly, but, um, but I just remember scouting UNLV and, and New Mexico and some different teams that played, you know, at the, uh, at the Smith Spectrum. I kind of like that name. It's got a good ring to it, by the way. Um, um, uh, it's kind of fitting. My wife got some, some text messages this morning from her family, and she's got a lot of family. Darcy's the second youngest of 10. Um, um, so that means she's the youngest, most spoiled. You can, some of you guys can relate. I'm the oldest of five, so you know, got to pave the way, right? Most responsibility, all that stuff. But, but what impressed me immediately, I'm a history major, and I remember where you were, where you are, and where we're going. And I always would watch those games when teams, when Utah State would play those teams in the Mountain West because, A, I loved watching them, you know, when they were playing here because the spirit and atmosphere was incredible. And I could always think, man, I would love to coach at that place because it's so important to the people. And so that's when, quite frankly, Utah State was introduced to me, you know, eight, nine years ago. And so going through this whole process, it's been amazing. I am so pumped to be the 19th men's basketball coach at Utah State University. Um, you know, you go through this process and it's been tremendous. Um, you know, I've always believed at every stop I've been, you can have success and it all starts at the top. And certainly our leadership at the top um, with President Cockett and, and John uh, is just tremendous. And, you know, um, as some of you guys saw ahead of time, we flew in here on Sunday. And, uh, um, and when we sat down and had lunch, uh, it was just an instant connection, um, um, and it just felt like family. And I'm a huge family guy, obviously my, my wife is, and I've learned through this process, so are they, and it's just so important to me and to our family to feel like we're a part of it, and we're all in this thing together. And so this process has been amazing. Like John said, uh, when we met in person last week, there was an instant connection. I mean. We were in that interview for I don't know how long, but it literally felt like 15 minutes. I mean, I walked out that door and I called my wife and I said, I, I can't explain it, but you just know it when you know it. And I hope like crazy, I get a phone call back, um, you know, to see this thing going further. So um, when you have that kind of leadership though, uh, it's amazing what you can truly accomplish. And so for that, I really appreciate everything. Um, their visions are certainly aligned with mine. And, you know, when John and I were really talking and going back and forth, it was like he was taking the words right out of my mouth. And I can't speak exactly for him, but I think there was some yin and yang there going back and forth, especially when we were talking about player personnel, right? <laughs> kind of an inside joke. We'll elaborate on that later when the kids aren't around. Um, before I get going crazy, I do want to bring my family up here real quick. Darcy, come on up. All you kids, come on up. Yeah. You, you guys want to talk? You're good? All right, let's get you guys over here. Right in the center. So this is my wife, Darcy. Been married for almost 23 years, and most guys can relate. It's been really long for her, very quick um, for me. But she's the rock, and you know we've had, I don't know how many stops along this journey, and she's the most amazing person I've ever met and so supportive of everything. And um, when this first became a possibility, he's like, well, if you feel like it's right, let's roll. And so um, she's just been incredible. 
Then we got, well, I'll go oldest to youngest. We got Landon. Landon's a junior in high school. He's taken. He's got a girlfriend already, so you, you know, all you high school, you know, just stay away. Uh, you guys too. Um, um, smartest, per well, Darcy's obviously the smartest in the family, but Landon's a very close second. Then we got Brady right here. Brady's an eighth grader, and that's about as big a smile as you're gonna get out of Brady. <laughs> Uh, in South Dakota, you get to drive in your 14. So he's 15. So I, what is it in Utah? 16? Well, like most states with, you know, sanity. Um, uh, so we got to see how this transition goes. Can he drive or not? At, I don't know. He's going to probably try to keep that South Dakota driver's license as long as he can. And then we got Carson over here. Yeah, now Carson's got a big smile all the time. And we know he's the trumpet player and just kind of a natural guy. And, and then, so they have the nickname as the Smith Boys. So they're kind of a wrecking crew. If, you get, if we get invited to anyone's house, there might be a few holes in the uh, wall by the end of it. And then we got Lauren, the princess right here. Lauren, you wanna raise your hand? And Ro Lauren runs the show, as you can imagine. So I'm so proud of these guys. You're gonna see us everywhere. We're truly all in as a family. You know, last night we were sitting in the hotel and it's one of those things where you're kind of like, this is real, and it's been a great two days uh, with our team and meeting so many amazing people. Last night at dinner, there was countless people coming up and saying hi, which was awesome. Um, but I'm laying, and I just you know can't fall asleep, and I'm sitting there, and I'm like, babe, Dars, can you believe it? I mean, in your wildest dreams, I mean, in your wildest dreams, could you ever imagine that'd be the, the head men's basketball coach at Utah State University, and she kind of rolls over and looks at me and says, baby, you're not even in my wildest dreams. Um, all right, that's what you get for 23 years, I guess. <laughs> yeah, look forward to your future, guys. Um, so, uh, uh, we're open access. Anything we can ever do in the community, speaking, whatever it might be, don't ever hesitate to ask, and we're all in this thing together. So, I wanted to introduce you to, to the crew. I know I gotta kinda pick it up here. I asked John this morning, how long do I have? He goes, well, you'll have quite a bit of time. You got about 15 minutes. And uh, yeah, I get a little long-winded, as you can maybe see, so um, I'll try to keep this thing rolling here. Uh, I wanna thank my agent, agents, Brett Just and Kevin Walsh, those two guys for CAA are, have been so amazing to me and just, they're just regular dudes. They always got your back. They're super supportive, have great insight into everything and they couldn't be here today. Uh, and then, like John alluded to, just this whole search process has quite frankly been phenomenal and, and I've been a part of a few of them. But I wanna thank Glenn Sugiyama right over here um, with, with DHR International and Glenn has spearheaded this whole thing and um, you know, everything has been top notch, first class in everything they've done. And he has an amazing way of keeping things very professional, yet personal. And, and it's a hard thing you go through with, you know, Utah State having to take care of some things and the privacy of your family and certainly protecting, you know, my old school and University of South Dakota. And I just can't thank you enough, Glenn, for the way you've operated as we just met obviously a few days ago, it feel, I told Glenn yesterday, you know, it's been five days, but it feel, or whatever it's been, but it feels like five years at times. Um, but, but he just knows how to take care of business, and so thank you, Glenn. Um, then I want to thank all the fantastic fans. You know, I, I just truly believe never delay gratitude. And we, our family had an amazing four years at the University of South Dakota, and they have great fans, and their support's been incredible. And we always say to our guys, the college experience is about the relationships that you make and the experiences that you gain that last a lifetime. And certainly, we're going to have friends there that'll last a lifetime. We have, they know is the river crew. We would go down to the river um, um, in the sandbar, and I won't explain the whole thing to you, but, but I know some of them are watching right now. And so thank you to the river crew. You guys have been incredible to us. I want to thank President Abbott at University of South Dakota, David Herbster, the athletic director, Dave Williams, who is our deputy AD and my direct supervisor, for giving this guy uh, my, his first chance as a head coach at, at University of South Dakota. When I took over there, it was a struggle. Uh, uh, there, we had to get through a lot of stuff in terms of their re record and culture and some different things. But uh, fortunately for us, we were able to do that going 48 and 21 the last two years. And we were ranked number 
as high as number three in the mid-major poll last year and in a number six behind schools like Gonzaga. And who knows, we might be seeing more of those guys um, soon, hopefully. Um, uh, behind St. Mary's and, and uh, just, you know, you coach for as long as I have, you run into some special teams. And I can't speak highly enough to the players that were in our program. And that's a tough deal because a big reason a lot of those guys came was because of me and our coaching staff. And to, to walk away from them, uh, I just can't thank them enough for everything they gave. And I like to use the phrase, um, I would dive on a grenade for that guy. And I think though I would do that for that team, and I think they would do it likewise. And, and we're going to get the th same thing going here at Utah State. Um, and I'd like to thank our staff there. You know, we're a big part of obviously winning is your staff. And we were very fortunate to A, hire a great staff, um, Austin Hansen and Eric Peterson and Gamli Ahalegba and Rick Karius and all those guys were with us the duration. And you know how it is in athletics. You, <laughs> what do they say? You're either coming or you're going uh, a lot of times. And, and our staff was with us all four years and had great families and the sacrifice that they had um, to help us get to the top was tremendous. So thank you to our, to our staff. Um, and then towards the end here, you know, I, I always thought it would take a special situation, not always thought, I always knew it would take a special situation for me to leave um, the University of South Dakota, and I've certainly found it here at, um, at Utah State where, where we have the leadership like I talked about and where I know um, we have the resources in place to be a major, major force in a great conference in the Mountain West. And that's my expectation. I don't do well with excuses. Obviously, you heard John uh, talk about winning, and he's made that crystal clear to me. Um, so, and that's what you want, right? You want to have, pressure is a privilege. And so you want to work for people that have high expectations, right? You want to coach guys that have incredible expectations for themselves and their players. And I have tremendous expectations for this, for Utah State men's basketball. And I will work my hands to the bone to make this, to get this program back where it belongs. And that's on top of the Mountain West Conference. Couple more thank yous and I'll really get rolling here. <laughs> Am I close to 15 minutes? All right, I wanna thank Coach Derrier. I always screw up, is it Coach uh, Derrier, thank you. I always confuse this, I'm not real smart. I graduated number two in my class though, um, so I was, but there was 18 of us, um, so true story. I was salutatorian, I couldn't even check off like top 10% in my college application. Thank goodness we had uh, two foreign exchange students in there uh, that helped anyway. But I wanna thank Coach. You know, uh, his effort in all the years that he's put in here does, is more appreciated than he can possibly imagine. He's a tremendous person, and, um, and I thank, can't thank him enough for his support. Uh, Tim Miles is my mentor. Um, sometimes I, I kind of uh, don't always just throw that out there, Coach Miles, but he's like the big brother. He's the youngest of five. As I told you, I'm the oldest of five. He's kind of my big brother I never had. Uh, and I'm the little brother he never had. As he, some of you know, he's the head coach at the University of Nebraska. But I worked with him when he was an NEI guy, you know, and I drove my own car, never claimed a re meal receipt. Uh, you'll hear more of that stuff later on. But, uh, but he's just been so tremendous, teaching me how to be a professional and how the business works. And I just can't thank uh, Coach Miles enough. Mike Moore, I was my first AD I ever worked with. The first guy that ever hired me as a head coach at Mayville State University. Um, took over a program that had won one game the year before. And, and fortunately for us, we went to three national tournaments and ended my third year playing in the national championship game. And then of course, I've had to live with this for four years. My press conference at South Dakota, I didn't thank my parents. And so for four years, I've had uh, you know, this guilt, uh, like, oh my gosh, I hope I get another chance to thank them. So I put in all caps on my, my parents. Um, and so I had to thank my parents uh, just incredible people, the way they raised us. Um, the value, I'm not sure they had two dimes to rub together, but they're the richest people I know. And the, the value of working hard and sacrifice and all those things that go into having a chance to be successful in anything that you do in life. And so, mom and dad, thank you for everything. Hi, mom. I like to say hi, mom, into the camera, you know, like the NFL guys always would do. And, 
That was way back in the day. Young kids don't do that. They just go, hi, mama, and like uh, FaceTime and do it like that. But, um, but thank you, mom and dad. And I want to thank the current basketball team here. I'll tell you, you know, transition's difficult. It, it's difficult and everything. It's really tough on those guys. Like you have two, three, two weeks or whatever without a coach, and you know you can imagine what that's like. That's tough to, well, what's going to happen? What's the next guy going to be like? Is he believe in us? Does he believe in our value? Does he know the Aggie way? Like all of those kind of things. And, and what's it going to be like? Is he going to be a militant guy? Is he going to be a, you know, who knows? And so that's tough. It's tough on me. I don't know these guys yet. I'm a big relationship guy. And so you got to be able to build trust, right, and go through that whole thing. And, and these guys have done a great job. I met with them on, what day is it today? Tuesday? <laughs> kind of all run together. Uh, Tuesday. So I met with them on Sunday for probably about a half an hour. It was great. And of course, at first, I'm a, you know, you look at body language and it's kind of, <laughs> you know, and then, and then by the end, they're kind of sitting up and, you know, you start talking a little bit more and, and doing the whole thing. And so we built in some equity there. And then yesterday was great. Had some individual meetings. I'll do more today and a little bit tomorrow. And um, and just get to know what makes them tick. What are you about? Tell me about your family, et cetera, et cetera. And seeing them in the weight room yesterday, and uh, welcome to Utah weather. We go down the weight room right here in the Estes, and it's sunny and shiny, and, and the guys had a good glare coming off my head. It was fantastic. And, um, and then 30 minutes later, it's snowing, and there's, I mean, you can't see the mountain. When I got here on Sunday, they promised me there was mountains. I couldn't, I guess I took their word for it. We couldn't quite see them. It was so cloudy, but, but it was great seeing the energy. It was tremendous energy in the weight room yesterday and a lot of high-fiving and fist pumping. And, and you're going to see that out of our teams. Like, we're going to have a Gata style of play. And Gata is, uh, any football guys in here? No? Oh, there's one. Ah, coach right up there. Yeah, there he is, the football guy. And, and so G coach knows what Gata stands for. Get after their butts. Uh, so it's a gate of mentality, and we're going to be the toughest dudes out there, right? We're going to be high-fiving, diving on the floor, playing aggressive man-to-man -man defense. Uh, we're going to push the pace, but we are going to play on attack. We are going to be in attack mode all the time. We were top third last year at University of South Dakota. We were top 30, in, we were 33rd in the country, or 32nd in the country. In defensive field goal percentage, we were 36th in the country. In offensive field goal percentage, we were, I believe, 10th in the country in, in point differential, and we were 13th in the country in uh, turnover margin. And so we're an attack. We're going to be the aggressors all the time. And, and I think it's a fun style of play for you guys to watch. One of the best awards I've ever, our team has ever received was when I was at Mayville, the, the Naismith Liston Award. It sounds impressive, right? When you hear Naismith, you know it's got to be a good award. But it was a national award for the team that showed the best sportsmanship, the most hustle, the best teamwork. And it seems like a little thing, but I'm really proud of that because that's about culture, right? That's about a day-to-day -day mentality of showing up in the gym or in the weight room or whatever it might be to be your best. And we talked briefly about that with our guys yesterday. And so I'm so fired up to be here, as you can maybe tell. Um, um, I can't wait to get rolling. You know, I could talk all day about hoops, uh, but I do want to, you know, I know some of you guys got to get back to work. Um, but, and I do want to open up for questions, but I'm going to end it like this. I got to get used to this altitude. Like, my lips are constantly <laughs> dry. You know, and so I take, I, I like to work out. I can, I'm going to climb these. Uh, when I lived in Fort Collins, I climbed uh, Long's Peak as a 14er. Did it four times. It was great. I can't wait. Somebody told me there's someone in the athletic department that climbs like the ones outside my office. I don't know what it's called. What? Wade. Wade. Where's Wade? Yes, Wade. I'm joining you. Um, one thing I learned about Wade, though, I can't get a word in over him. Like, he's one of the rare guys. And John's a louder talker than I am. So I think that might have been our connection. He talks more than me, and he's louder than me, which is hard for me to find. But um, um, I want to end like this. You know, I was so fortunate. The late Coach Meyer, Don Meyer, who some of you may know, he did coaching clinics and camps all over the place. And uh, I got to – these things are restrictive. I got really broad shoulders. And, uh, <laughs> and so um, Coach Meyer was like my uh, big-time mentor for me in terms of he's almost like a father, grandfather type of figure 
And it was one of those guys when he says something, he's like E.F. Hutton. When E.F. Hutton talks, people listen. That was Coach Meyer. But through him, I got to meet the late, great John Wooden. And uh, he surprised me, went on a trip. He had to speak at a coaching clinic in Southern California. And, and he didn't tell me uh, what else we were doing. And we drive up to the, in this residential area, and he's at a uh, condo, very modest, and rings the doorbell, and out walks Coach Wooden. And you're, you're like, oh, what? It's like, is this happening right now? Is this real? And we spend a whole day with Coach. And I can tell you so many stories uh, about that day. I was a 32-year-old, just got done with my first year as a head coach. And, and you coach for so many reasons. Certainly, I love the competition. Bring on the competition is my motto. But, but spent a day with him. And he, he had this old cell phone, probably as wide as this podium, and like this tall, and you could hear every voicemail. So Bill Walton was calling, Sven Nader, the late Pat Summit. I could go on and on. And you heard every voicemail. And all these former players would end it by saying, I love you, coach. And that just hit me. And I don't want to get too deep on you, but you know, it, it truly is about the experiences that you gain and the relationships that you make. And I'm like, I want to be like that. Now, we all kind of want to be like Coach Wooden, but, but that's what I want out of this experience. And it's amazing, you know, at 32, and I'm a lot older than that now, and, um, but going through that process, it's been so fun to hear those words from so many players, whether I was an assistant at Nebraska or at Colorado State or a head coach at South Dakota or my, my former guys at Mayville State. And, um, uh, but I think you get that when you win. I think you get that when you build trust, you build equity, right? And you just mentor that way. So I'm so fired up to get going here. I didn't talk a ton about basketball except being in attack mode, but I can't wait to up our schedule. I, bring, I truly believe in being the best and playing the best, and we're gonna build a fantastic schedule. We gotta get this thing going again where the Mountain West Conference has multiple bid teams that can get at-larges. I think that's incredibly important, and I don't see why not uh, get that thing going at, uh, with the Aggies. So with that, I'll, um, um, anything else that I need, we'll open it up, I think, for questions, but I am so proud to be your men's basketball coach, and go Aggies! Am I, uh, are we just opening this thing up or are we, any questions? Is that right? If not, I'll keep talking. We can keep talking all day. I can tell coach here, I used to be a DN. I was in the 4-3 and I could really get in stance and fire off around that right edge. No, I was on the left edge. <laughs> That's where the best pass rushers are. Oh no, it's the right edge, isn't it? Yes. Absolutely, I'd be proud to. Let's, we'll start with my beautiful wife, Darcy. As you know, I'm a heck of a recruiter. Stand on up, Darcy. Yep, Darcy. All right, Lauren. Come on up, Lauren. Carson. Look at that smile. Brady. Look at that smile. <laughs> and Landon. Let's give him one more brown. Thank you. Thank you. Yes? You were scheduled for staff yet. I knew that was coming. That's why I didn't talk about my staff yet, because I knew so. I am not yet, and that's a great credit. And that's one of the most important things, certainly, that we can do. And, and um, it, it's been great, the interest. I mean, I got, um, you know, I got, uh, let's just look here. I got, well, I currently have 292 text messages. You can zoom in there if you don't believe me. Um, and I got a bajillion tweets and direct messages. And there's been great interest, and certainly, the Aggie way in Utah State men's basketball has got a great reputation. I think, um, you know, I don't want to sound conceited, but I think I have a good reputation in the business, and, and um, I'm excited at the opportunity. Certainly, the administration has really stepped forward in a major, major way and, uh, to, to fund success. And, and, you know, we don't need to have the most in the world, but we got to have enough to be very successful. And, 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 uh, we've really stepped it up from that respect, and so we're going to have a uh, hire a tremendous staff. I'm not just going to go out and hire guys, you know, just to get them in, and now we go. And so we're going to certainly, you know, we could hire some guys maybe later today. Could be tomorrow. Could be two weeks from now, right? We're going to do our due diligence to make sure that we get the best 
coaching staff, the best support personnel that's going to represent our community and our people the right way. And be able to obviously get a, re you know, I think a big thing in any walk of life is you got to be able to get a response. So you got to find uh, the right people out there that know how to motivate guys, that can touch people and get into our, in our, into our community and represent all of us the right way and have the same values and beliefs that we do, certainly in our community and in our program. What else? Yes? I've won That's another good question. I would say, you know, it just depends. There's always turnover and transition. You know, we're still figuring all that stuff out. But I would say for sure three to four uh, is what we'll have available uh, in terms of scholarship. You know, in Division One, you have 13 full rides, right? And you know you can't um, divide them up. Um, and so we'll just see. But it's got to be the right pick. I'm incredibly, incredibly picky uh, in, in a lot of different ways. <laughs> And so I'm over the top when it comes to recruiting. Like I, like I'm going to recruit guys that my kids can be proud of, right? And my family, my wife, and obviously John and President, and 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 so and that you got people as fans can be incredibly proud of. And and and, and they're never perfect, right? We all make mistakes. I make a million of them a day, but we're going to get the right guys that are going to play our way. Right, and that's aggressive, that are very skilled. I love skilled guys. Our style of play, like I said, in terms of being in attack mode, we give, I'm so big into skill development. John, like, I'm really over the top with that stuff because, you know, for us, when, you, when we bring in a freshman and you see him as a sophomore, you're gonna say, wow, that kid got better over the summer. And then you're gonna see him again as a junior and say, wow, that guy got better that next year. One of the, you know, this year at South Dakota, and, and we're going to do it in a lot of different ways. We've been very successful with some Division I transfers, even grad transfers, depending on. But certainly high school, that's how we've really built our programs, you know, all the way through. But this year we had uh, a first-team all-league guy that was a Division I transfer. Had one, he went to Air Force, right? He had one scholarship offer out of high school, one, right? And that was at Air Force. And he transferred us, a two-time first-team all-league guy. Very good player. Then we had another guy who was a junior college transfer with three years of play, and you guys are probably from North Idaho Community College, um, and, and he's been, he was a second team all-league guy this year as a junior, right? And then Tyler, Heg another kid, Tyler Hegner is a high school kid that hardly played as a freshman, played a little more as a sophomore, all-league guy as a junior. Just kept developing, right? And then another kid that was on the honorable mention all-conference as a high school sophomore, started every game as a sophomore. So. You know, we really believe in skill development and seeing that fruition pay off eventually and, and putting our guys in a position to have great success. Um, just the pat on, sure. all three of them, did you say? Yes. I just don't know. Certainly we're targeting certain guys and we're going to take the guys that we, and, and we want to certainly be good right away next year. But the idea too is, you know, when you take shortcuts, you get cut short, right? So we're building a program here, certainly for next year, but to have sustained, like John alluded to, to have sustained success where every single year you can pencil us towards the top, right? And always have a chance to win the Mountain West Championship. Well, right here. That's a great question, you know, um, at, and, and I'm using, I know I don't want to, you know, I use South Dakota as a little bit of a reference point, but um, like, so in my four years at South Dakota, we played, like this past year, we played at UCLA, lost by three, played at TCU, right, lost by five, uh, had, a, had a wide open three to tie it with 13 seconds to go, miss, foul, right, you know how that goes. Played at Duke. Right, we scored 50, and I'm not into moral victories. So trust me, I'm not sitting there saying like, I, I don't do well with moral victories and losing, period. Um, but I believe you build it brick by brick and have a process. Um, so Duke, we were scheduled to play another big time school next year. I can't say it right now because it's not been released yet. Um, we played at Gonzaga last year. I know we had a good game with Gonzaga, I believe this year, right? Um, and I think it was tied with eight minutes to go or whatever, and we just, couldn't quite, you know, get over the hop, uh, hump. 
And so, and we got to learn, to, we got to just do better finishing with a flourish. But, and then we played a million, Iowa, Nebraska, Minnesota, blah, 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 blah. And so, um, I'm open to all that stuff. Certainly, you know, most, <laughs> most high majors aren't going to come, you know, they, they don't need to. They're not going to come and play a true road game. It's just rare and rare to find. Now, that being said, the, what, how did the NCAA committee decide who was going to make the NCAA tournament this year, right? It was all quadrant one wins, maybe a few, but, but the big thing was how many quadrant one wins did those schools get? So, you know, I think those schools, a lot of times, they're probably going to have to really look in the mirror and say, okay, how are we going to truly look to schedule? Certainly when you go on the road and you win, you get even more value for that. So maybe more teams will do that. At the same time, I'm not holding my breath. But I would love to get those types of teams, you know, in our home. Uh, the spectrum is such an amazing, like I alluded to, that's what first got me excited about Utah State. It was just, I just remember watching those games and just getting goosebumps of the, uh, this is the winning side, right? This is, I suck at singing, so I can't like go crazy with it. But, but it is so, I love that, or when they're jumping up and down and doing the whole, and, and I gotta tell you, when we walked in and I saw the spectrum for the first time, I love the, the colored chairs. Um, <laughs> and so I, but what I truly, because this tells me a lot about our administration too, the ability to put our student body, the herd, like I can't wait to go running up into the herd and hopefully it's a mosh pit and they can, I'll start at the top and we're gonna body surf all the way down, um, hopefully. Can you guys make that happen? Huh? Can we make that happen? Um, yeah, I like this guy right here. Hey, stand up. Yeah, he was hoping I'd call him out. <laughs> so, um, I can't wait the, for our administration to say, you know what, you guys are so important to um, our sustained success and putting them at the, I would say the 50 yard line, I love football, um, putting them at half court. I mean, those are prime time seats and saying, hey, this is how important you are to us and then having them all the way around the corner like that gave me goosebumps when I saw that. So, um, what was the question again? <laughs> What else? There's got to be more. You guys are sick of me already. Any other questions? Yes. Um, we started to at the end of our. Uh, they like the they like the outdoors, and so we. How about this? The first time we climbed the mountains in, uh, you know, we're from Minnesota, so we're flatlanders, and uh, you know, the first time we go up in the mountains, I was a little like, okay, what do we do if we see a snake? Right? What, what do we do if we see a bear? Like, are we supposed to run or play dead? Or So literally the first time, I don't know if you remember this, Landon or Brady, I think I just brought you two the first time, of just the three of us. And I'm not even kidding. So we go, I like a little adventure. And we go off kind of the path a little bit. We're on this big rock. And literally out of nowhere, this snake just starts coming right at my, at Landon. And I'm like, and so what they, what the locals told us is if you see a snake, you just, like, you just jump and stop, right? You just get in the stance and you stop. So the snake comes right out and Landon just jumps and stop. And he's in a defensive stance and the snake comes right to him and then veered off the other way. But you know how it is sometimes as a parent, it's just that you think it's in one ear out the other, but that certainly got their attention. And I can tell you another story. Well, I could talk a lot of stories, but Darcy was pregnant with Lauren and, and it was like our, one of our last, she's like, I've, you know, would you get this thing that if I was sitting by her, she'd be doing this to me, like shut up. But um, but we were down on the beach and we had to go through these. I don't know what you call it. The, there was like a lot of sage stuff on the uh, foothills, and we always were safe going on the main, you know, the little wider trails. Well, when Mama has to go to the bathroom and you're eight months pregnant, there's you know safety kind of goes out the window. It's just the quickest way, right? Which you know from A to B, and so we start going on the. These back trails, and I'm so, uh, normally I always lead the way, and Brady, Brady, raise your hand, Brady led the way, and Brady's an aggressive, right, just go kind of guy. And so he's going, I'm going right behind, all of, a, all of a sudden I hear the, the rattler, and so I look down, and my dad's behind me, and my dad, you know, at that time was 60, and you know, and he's trying to get the, the, the altitude, and the, so I hear this, and I'm like, oh boy. You know, it gets real, real quick. 
and I, and I look down to my left, and I see the snake um, just sitting there. I see the rattle, and all of a sudden, I see the, the uh, what do you call it, the, the, you know, the neck, like, fan out or whatever. And so I, I reach down, and I just, you know, uh, only like a dad can do, right, Brady? You saved your life. And, uh, <laughs> and I reach down, and I just, my, and, with, with left hand, too, and boom. Popped him and the snake just shot at him. And I turned and I'm like, Dad, run. And we just ran as fast as we possibly could. And I'm so thankful my dad didn't fall and just tumbled down the mountain. So um, so we do, we just started mountain biking late, but I but we're gonna get this thing rolling that way. Well, thank you guys for oh, yep. Very, very, but you know, when it comes, and I talk about recruiting all day, and we did a lot of that in the uh, interview, but I, I truly believe you, you got to, you, you know, it's an inside out philosophy, right? You want to, you had a great talk with um, some of the guys yesterday uh, that are from locally, and it's just, it's, there's just so much pride, right? And um, one of the guys in particular was talking about how he remembers growing up and seeing our crowds and, and that whole thing, and so, you know, I have, I have good relationships with uh, a lot of the right people, you know, when it comes to recruiting uh, locally, and then, and then you, you know, branch out to get guys that are going to fit you that way. But that's, uh, that'll be a high priority for us. Yes? Yes. We had a great, I mean, yes, I, you know, the, the player piece, those guys, uh, not necessarily that part of it, although we have some really good players that could play at a lot of different levels. Uh, but those guys, you know, I would, they believe in South Dakota and that's where they need to be. And, uh, but in terms of the staff, no question about it. We had, we had a tremendous, tremendous staff uh, at the University of South Dakota. And you know what, they, they know me, I know them, I know what they're about with their morals and values and integrity and, and we're all on the same page. Now that doesn't mean that's an automatic, but certainly, they'll uh, get strong consideration. Oh, yeah, one more. Yeah, I, you know, it's a new beginning, and uh, I truly, I think one of the biggest compliments we get of our team is our guys play with tremendous poise and confidence, and and no, we don't let outside influences distract us. And, and what are outside influences? Well, one of the great things we've been a tremendous road team, uh, all forty, well, three of the four years that I was at South Dakota. And so you got to be able to control outside influences. What are what are those? Bad officiating. <laughs> it can start there. Um, uh, the scoreboard. Maybe you're down by twelve or fifteen. Right, and, and what happens sometimes when you get down, you lose your poise. And all of a sudden you think you gotta make a 15 point play. Right, no, you just chip away. We always say, like you're not gonna chop down the tree with one big flying, you know, right, chop. You gotta chip, boom, 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 boom. And you just gotta grind that thing out. And, and so it's, it's literally, I know it's cliche-ish, but it's literally every possession. But poise and confidence, and players having confidence. And how do you define that? I'm not sure there's an exact formula, but I know what really helps is building trust, right? They know that you got their back. And that doesn't mean you kiss their, like, it's discipline, right? It's toughness, it's being real. But when you, you can do that when they believe in you. You can do that more so when you know, like, hey, I got your back, right? And so, um, so you gotta play with great poise and confidence. You gotta control outside influences. You know, whether you're up 12 or down 12, you play the same. You know, unless there's two minutes left and you're up 12, like you might want to milk the clock a little bit, right? But, but, but I'm a big situation guy. Like we work on late game situations a lot because at our level, so many games come down to three or four possessions, right? So many games at our level are, you know, two to eight point games. So that's a three or four possession game at the end of the day. And all those things are critical. We do special teams. I told you I love football. We do, we do special teams, and I won't go into the details of all that, but, but we chart that out every game. And we can, when we can win the special teams, we get fouled a lot. Like last year, or not this past season, but two years ago, we were number, at the end of the regular season, we were number six in the country 
351 Division I teams in men's basketball. We were number six in the country in free throws attempted. Right? This year, I believe we ended in the top 40 in free throws made. So what does that do when you get fouled a lot? It, it's a lot harder to, for the opponent to go on big runs because you're constantly getting to the line and you make them and you can slow down those kind of things. So, and part of that, how do we get fouled? Well, we're in attack mode a lot, right? We create a lot of turnovers. So, with that, guys, uh, I, I can't thank you enough. We are so fired up, my family and I, to be an Aggie and anything I can ever do in the community, um, please let me know. I'm a very passionate guy and, and um, I just can't wait to get rolling. Go Aggies! <laughs> <laughs>